I have a story to tell to you. And by the grace of God, I'll tell it well and true. And I'll begin to apologize for the ways that it has changed my life. Because this is the story of one come from glory who came to restore. He came to die so that we could say goodbye to death's harsh sting and know this thing, true life anew. But I get ahead of myself. <laughs> I do. I tend to do that, but I can't hide my excitement over the life that he has brought, over the changes he has wrought. I can't hardly begin. I am doing it again. Let me start from the start. Back to the part before we are a part of it all. Now, I cannot set the scene quite right because no eye has seen this sight. Nor could we comprehend a nothing without end. Because nothing buzzed and nothing was and all because the only thing that was, was God. And then it, or at least the little bit of it that we can get began. It began with a breath. A string of words from his mouth. Thunderous, powerful words. Let there be light! Let there be both day and night, not stopping there. He made the air and stretched it clear from here to there and called it sky. He said, let there be both earth and seas and grass and trees. Let all this be, he did decree. And as he was commanding and creating, the universe was expanding and inflating. Creation conformed to the words that were formed, the source of formation, God's creative demonstration of supernatural causation. This was colossal activation. Now, in the place of nothing, stood something, stood life. Morning dew rested on the leaves of maples and oaks and olive trees. The birds did as they're known to do, and into the wind he created they flew. Waves lapped against the ocean shore, intermittently echoing the lion's roar. And in its depths the creatures teemed. All of creation was finished, or so it seemed. For God had ceased speaking, but he wasn't done. He hadn't yet finished what he had begun. His hand reached down and found the earth, and drawing up some dust from it, he formed us. Then he breathed again, not to make us. He'd done that with his hands, but to give us that which we can't understand, the breath of life. Two worlds collided. The terrestrial and the celestial coincided. A powerful formation, an intimate creation, a loving affirmation of us. His most precious creation. But then came the temptation. The temptation to be something likened to he who created us. And while that's wholly ridiculous, we took the bait of the apple we ate and decided our fate then and there. For in this act we rebelled and in that moment exhaled that breath of life he gave. We tossed that gift away and lived to rue the day that we decided to die. And we've been gasping for breath and fighting back death ever since we called down the curse. Explosion of erosion, confusion and death spiraled out of control. Darkness spread over the earth and our souls. All of creation had been given to us, so the curse that had come fell not only upon us. It wrecked the trees, it fouled the breeze, it soiled the seas. It poisoned the animals, broke it up, burned it all. All of it bore the fall. All of it, all of it, felt the free fall of it. So from our souls and from all that abhorred us rose up to God a destitute chorus. Please save us. And he heard us and he sent us his son, the one in whom are all things, through whom come all things, by whom would all things be delivered, would cease to wither and slither toward death. 
Heaven and earth coincided and in him collided. Fully God and fully man, the only one in whom God's plan could rest. And to the cross he made his way. But all the way there and day by day, he did wonders profuse and gave peaks at the power that he would let loose in that day and hour, proclaiming God's name and healing the lame and taking our blame, for that's why he came and he died. And when he did die, all creation did sigh and groaned, cried and moaned, and the mountains shook, mourning the life we took, and the sun went black, wishing he'd come back. And he did. Power and wonder tore death asunder and gave hope for those under the curse. The war was over before it begun. The risen Jesus had already won. He went on the attack and broke death's back and bought us back from the grave. Death had been destroyed. Love had filled the void. Life had thrown off scorn. All creation was reborn. Brothers and sisters, I wouldn't want you to miss this. The very essence, the point, the drift of my gist is the power that raised Jesus from the grave. It's the power that's in those who trust that he saves. It's like TNT, his spirit in me, breaking down the division, a cataclysmic collision. And I am new. I am new. And this is what he will do in you. It may sound improbable, impossible, even laughable, but he will make it true. All that we bring is our lives desolation. And he takes us and he makes us a brand new creation. <laughs>